How social media has changed Jeff Coffey's world and a lot of other musicians. And me and you. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. When I was growing up in the 70s, the only time I'd hear about what's going on in rock and roll, I would hear it from the radio or I would hear it from Rolling Stone magazine. And then the internet came and we could get news just like that. And then social media was there. And social media has changed my world as a broadcaster. I've been a broadcaster for 35 years, but I've never been able to reach so many people in my life. And I've worked major market all my life in Edmonton and Calgary and Vancouver. And there's a big push to working in such a big market in radio, but nothing like social media, which has really helped this channel an awful lot. Jeff Coffey, he's done a great job with social media. You Sorry. talk to your fans an awful lot. You have an open, and it's something that's changed from when I was growing up, from when you were growing up, oh, where absolutely. that it's open now. Not all artists do it. Not all artists, some artists that are, like I'm almost 60. If I was an artist, I, there might be a part of me that says, I want to be left alone now because I've been in the limelight or else other artists are just saying, well, no, that I'm here because of them. Uh, was it, Were you always the type of guy that would have done this to talk to the fans openly? Probably, I would have to say probably not because I think, um, so yeah, I, I come from an era of when you didn't really know a lot about what the band looked like, you know? Uh, there's a lot of big records that were out that didn't necessarily have pictures of the band on it. And uh, if you did, if there was, it was on the back or it was on the side, inside sleeve or something like that. And it was more about the music. Uh, and then when MTV came in the 80s, well, then you saw the video. But if you wanted to see what the band looked like, you wanted to know more about the band, you buy a ticket, you go see the concert, you know. Um, one of the first bands I remember ever really embracing the social media thing was Bare Naked Ladies. And I remember, uh, I think they had lost their deal or something, or getting ready to. And but they they had all they had already, when they had launched, uh, when they had really had success, embraced that whole fan, bringing the fans into their life. You know, they would bring the fans in for sound checks and dinners and things like that. And and I thought, wow, that's a weird concept, you know. Um, but now it has become the norm. Um, I mean, uh, people really want to know little things about your life, you know, whether it's personal, whether what are you doing, what do you do backstage or, uh, what do you do in your off time or, you know, they, they feel like they're more connected. They almost feel like they're your friend, you know, and I think it, you know, it, it obviously it's very clear that it works. You know, people, people feel like they know you better. You know, and um, so it's a cool experience that, that I have fully embraced because, you know, I feel like I have a connection with the people that follow me, you know, and if, and if that turns into a better relationship with the fans, then, hey, let's, you know, that that's what it's all about in the end. What's a Jeff Coffey concert? I've never been to your concert. I, I, I hope to be sometime. Uh, a Jeff Coffey concert experience is going to be something that will, people will take away uh you know they'll, they'll come away with uh some great stories they'll come away with songs that hopefully they'll be singing in their head for weeks to come and they can't get it out of their head you know whether it's one of mine or something they're familiar with uh i i want them to come away uh i want them to, to come away from the jeff coffee concert going wow that was good and you know wanting to tell their friends about it you know and because I, I i would you know, I, I always, people have asked me before, like, what, what's it like playing in front of 20,000 people? And I say, you know, it really is no different than playing for 20 people. You know, if I'm going to strap on an instrument and sing something, I'm going to do it 110% or I'm not going to do it at all. So I want people to come away from one of my shows thinking that they got their money's worth and it was a great show and they're going to tell their friends about it, you know, and come, come with them next time. Is that a you thing, or or did you develop that for or four thousand or forty thousand in the audience? It doesn't matter. Was that always the way it was for you? Well, no. I think it came from combination of, of training. You know, I, I was in the music programs in school, high school and college. I played trombone, so studying and, and preparing and playing your best, even in front of the judges. You know, in school competitions. You know. So it was always ingrained in me to, if I'm going to perform, well, I need to perform at my absolute best all the time, you know, whether I'm playing for a, a room, a small room or, you know, 20,000 people, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the size. And another thing that I always, for me, I always played for the guys on stage. I always wanted to, 
at the end of the gig, people go, yeah, man, that, that sounded good, you know? Yeah, you sounded great, you know? You know, because I know that if it sounds good to us, it's going to sound good to them. I, you know what? Obvious, it's an obvious thing, but it's not. To I think the audience, it's not. They don't think, oh, the guys are going back backstage going, did I... I mean, I met Tony Bennett backstage once, and he come, he came up to me. And said, Did it sound okay? I'm going, you freaking Tony Bennett! What? Uh, you know? I'd, I'd listen to Tony Bennett sing the phone book. All you millennials are going, what's the phone book? <laughs> yeah, that's Tony, right. <laughs> at this, he, his voice is like amazing, right? I mean, it's, it's true. You know, if you, you know, I mean, that's why you rehearse. If you, if you know it sounds good to you, yeah, it's going to sound good to them. And then you have that relationship with them. From, from the stage to the audience and back again, you know. I'm sensing for you, and I'm, I'm going to put words in your mouth, that there's a sense of excitement here where the machine, all the parts have come together through talent, through luck, through just a, you know, a, a lot of hard work, that you have an open slate now. You can take a few chances here and there. Uh, you're getting your name out. This must be an exciting time for you musically. It is. It's very exciting. Yeah, I mean... And, you know, I was doing, you know, I was in various bands before. And then I did, I did the solo thing for probably about eight years, put a couple records out. And, but it was very, you know, uh, underground, just in the trenches, you know. Um, but one thing that I have embraced and learned is this, this whole social media thing. It's amazing what you can do. It's amazing how many people you can reach with it. And uh, if you can get people interested in what you do, online well then you can reach more people and you can actually get out and travel and 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 make it feasible to go and play your shows you know and um so that's really what i think what has changed more now for me is being in that position now to where i can reach people uh on this little screen right here you know and um that you know perpetuates what you do out there you know on a live show you know, and and also what you do in videos and what you do on records and everything. So, I used to have this thing. I used to tell my staff when I was a program director: try to at least once an hour say something to the audience that they'll repeat to someone else. You talk to if they're on the computer and if they're a fan of yours, they'll go, "Jeff, Co oh, I'm talking to Jeff Coffee." I, mean, right. I find it highly unlikely that they're not going to tell someone else that, "Hey, Jeff and I were talking. He told me the he bought this thing, which is cool or whatever." That's the kind of thing. That's what social media does. It makes Something happens in social media which will cause them to tell someone else. Right. It's that exciting. <clears throat> right. Yeah. It's like it's like the old school word of mouth thing. You know, when, when Van Halen first started playing out in the strip in L.A., they played their first show and, and, you know, not very many people there. All of a sudden, people are going, oh, my God, this band's amazing. They go tell their friends. Next show, it's more crowded. Next show, bigger venue. Next, and it's just, you know, word of mouth. Well, now we have that here on social media. It's word of mouth, you know. So you can reach a lot of people on social media. We premiered Back on My Feet again, the brand new Jeff Coffee song on Monday. It's on this channel. Check it out. Also go to Jeff Coffee Music on Facebook. Origins is the new album that Jeff is working on. We're going to have more updates on that album because I love having Jeff on this channel. He's just one of those guys that I could talk to for hours. He's a family man. I mean, a guy who was with Chicago from 2016 to 2018 as their lead singer and bassist. Works with Don Felder now. Michael Omardian is working on one of his songs from Origins. I mean, he's got a lot of things going on. He's doing solo stuff. I have a lot of respect for the guy. And Jeff, thank you for being our guest this week. You're one of the good ones. Go to Jeff Coffee Music on Facebook. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.